hell and it's gone on far too long. Hi, my name is Suzanne Krull. I'm the executive director of Cuba Cultural Center. We're down here in the rural part of Allegheny and Cattaraugus counties in the southern tier. And today is April 20th, 2020. Cuba and the Southern Tier are a collection of very small, rural, predominantly white communities. Historically, this area has been very poor. I moved here in the winter of 1998, and in the 20 years that I've lived here, Allegheny County and Cattaraugus County, which is our neighbor to the west, have always been above average in things like food insecurity, especially among children, where almost a quarter of our children don't know where their next meal is going to come from. Most of our small businesses have either gone to really reduced hours or even closed altogether. Uh, I'm not sure how many of them will reopen once we get on the other side of that pandemic. We have a lot of low wage folks who, you know, have to work. They'll lose their jobs if they don't go to work. So for them, the choice to stay home and follow the protocols and practices for social distancing that we really all need to follow are really not options. So they work one or two or three part-time jobs. And for those folks, if their businesses close or go to reduced hours, they are out of work. So the food security program that we are running at the center that I manage, it has seen a huge spike. And so we have gotten these calls from people who have lost work or thought they had enough and or their local pantry closed. And so it really highlights that more of us are poor or low wealth than we thought. So when we talk about things like 140 million people being one emergency away or a little over half of the New Yorkers uh, being poor or low wealth, that's really playing out in the statistics and the stories that we're hearing when we talk to people. Cuba Cultural Center has historically been a group of poor, low wealth, and otherwise marginalized people who have been helping ourselves and our communities. Even as executive director, I still make just over minimum wage, and so I qualify for all of our food security programs. So we really are a, a group of dispossessed folks gathering together to, to do the work and make sure that people have food. We're the ones who are showing up many more days than we had to pre-COVID-19 gathering food, accepting delivery, sorting food, bagging food, preparing food, and actually distributing it to families. So we are showing up and putting ourselves at risk um, as essential workers. We're not lazy. We're not looking for handouts. We are hardworking, dedicated, committed, and creative, creative people who are doing the work that a lot of people, other people, would not do pre-COVID and aren't doing now. When the pandemic became visible at the beginning of March, we contacted our funders and asked them if we could just push food out because kids needed it now, not necessarily, we didn't know if they would need it in June or July, and they gave us the go-ahead. So we've been sending about a thousand um, backpacks to each of those school systems every two weeks. That money will be gone by probably the end of April. So I don't know how we're going to feed those kids on the weekends in those schools. Um, our food programming for our uh, family programs also dried up very quickly. We had used all of our existing grant money again within that first 10 days or two weeks. Uh, some funding has come in, um, but it is probably only enough to get us through 60 days, maybe. Um, and so after that, there'll be another struggle. So I, I have some real serious concerns, uh, not only about what we're going to do for the long-term economic uh, recession that's undoubtedly going to follow the medical crisis, but how we're even going to get through a crisis, especially if we have multiple waves of illness like we saw back in the um, influenza epidemic of 1918 or 1919. We have a lot of opportunities, again, in one-on-one -on -one conversations and in ongoing work as a, a supporting organization of the Poor People's Campaign to have conversations with people about how we are poor and low wealth, not because we have failings or shortcomings, but because the system is designed to keep us poor so that we don't gather together and demand the things we all need to thrive. And it's gone on far too long, and we won't be silent. In